You know, it has to be tap and pay, that fast, that simple. It has to be, have a lot of layers of bulletproofing to prevent, you know, scams and frauds from happening or at least from being too damaging. Yeah. There, it has to be thought through kind of like the iPhone. The iPhone didn't bring, you know, a lot that was new, but it packaged it in a way that everyone could, could access. Yeah. Hey folks, Flo here with Crypto News Canada, still at the Canadian Blockchain Summit here in beautiful, sunny Calgary. I'm here with Paul Chafe, who's with Dandelion, and he'll explain in just a moment uh, exactly what uh, this is all about. Uh, why don't you just actually give us an introduction in one minute or less? Okay, so Dandelion is a new layer one network, okay. and we, our bragging numbers are a quarter million transactions per second, finalized in a single second. But the most important thing about it is that it scales. So what we've seen today in the blockchain space is the Buterin trilemma, secure, scalable, decentralized, pick any two. Ours actually scales internally, natively, so we, we've solved that. Uh, to do that, we got some really interesting uh, underlying physics, actually, beneath the computation. And then a whole lot of interesting innovations on the tech stack on top of that. And I don't know how much you can share about it, but proof of stake, proof of work? Uh, well, it's, it's different from both. Okay. Um, proof of work encapsulates energy in a verifiable token, yeah. and it works just like gold used to. Uh, proof of stake is essentially the fiat currency version of that. Uh, they both have drawbacks. Proof of work is slow and expensive. Proof of stake is vulnerable to centralization. That's that and trifecta you were talking about? Yeah. And uh, ours, ours solves those problems. We're not quite ready to come out with that yet, but I'm uh, happy to talk about the entire rest of this tech stack because it's pretty cool. You made us very curious now, of yeah. course. Uh, why the name Dandelion? Uh, because Dandelions are humble, simple, they're accessible, and they are everywhere, right? <laughs> Try and stop a Dandelion. Nice. Uh, humble is something that one of our previous interviewees listed as a typical Canadian characteristic that is reflected in uh, Canadian crypto. Uh, is yep. that something that you witness as well? Uh, I think so. I mean, uh, in, in our case, you know, we, we're, we have a very big vision, right? I mean, the, the vision of cryptocurrency writ large is to, you know, provide a method of financial service that's going to include the two billion people who are not yet financially serviced at all on the planet. It is to reduce the monopoly or eliminate the monopoly fees that are charged by the existing incumbent transaction networks. It's yeah. a really big uh, vision. Um, we want to stay very humble in trying to achieve that. Like, you know, we think we have cool technology. Technology is far from the only part of solving the entire problem. Of course, of course. Now, um, if we zoom out a little bit, uh, first of all, is this your first time at this event? Or at a, I should say at a CBC event since it is the first Canadian summit. And what is your impression of, I guess, the, the community here? Well, so I, I've been to a bunch of different uh, blockchain events, especially since the, the pandemic has ended. Uh, the community here in Calgary is, is really awesome. There's a lot of people coming out of oil and gas, so they understand risk. They understand, uh, you know, the, the, the total environment and they're, they're very pro-investment okay. and they're looking for ideas. So, you know, we have an idea and we're, we're looking to connect. Are you meaning that a lot of the people here at this conference come from oil and gas and they're particularly receptive? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, in, in oil and gas, it's all about the balance of risk and reward. Yeah. It's about understanding the, the real facts of what's involved. You, you can't sort of wave your hands and get around the, the physical requirements to get it out of the ground, get it transported to the market. And so they understand, for example, okay, I can put in a Bitcoin site and that will effectively transfer my gas to market without a pipeline. Yeah. Right? That's what it does. So uh, a lot of really forward thinkers and it, it's a great vibrant place to be. So uh, zooming out a bit to Canada more broadly, what is your, your sense of the market? And then also maybe give us a sense of the global market. Uh, for cryptocurrency or blockchain? Yeah, or yeah so All of it. I mean, right now uh, it's, it's another crypto winner. I think it's kind of telling that the crypto winner sees the, the prices fall down to the peak of what the, the pre-2017 winter was, or the post-2017 winter was. Yeah. Uh, you know, they... What does that this, tell us? Well, it's... 
it's growing. You know, it's it's going to grow in waves. Yeah. Right. But the long term future, this is simply a more um, efficient technology, and it's more accessible. Right. So, you know, if someone has not got access to the conventional banking network, because they're simply not worth the banking network's time or money to engage, you know, you present an accessible solution, and that's one thing that we really focus on is making it accessible, then all of a sudden you've included all those people, yeah. right? All of a sudden you've, you've enabled applications which currently are simply not possible. Right. And you know, that's, you see that in any technology when it comes along, you really, people really haven't figured out yet all the things it can do. Yeah. As they do, it's only going to grow. That's, One example that's, that I've heard not so long ago was Amazon, where Amazon, and it was actually Jeff Booth who said in this interview that uh, when there's a disruptive technology coming onto the market, typically it's people on the fringes that maybe don't have all the other benefits that, that others have that adopt it first. So when Amazon came out, people, for example, outside of the big cities that didn't necessarily have access to the same kind of stores or malls or whatever. Yeah, exactly you know, right. Were re right away like, well, that's a solution for me, right? And then little by little, it just sort of reaches to the center and everybody realizes how much more convenient it is than uh, the previous technology. A hundred percent. And Amazon's a great example because their initial selling feature was they, they included the massive backlist that you just couldn't get easily. That's right. And they made it available to everyone, not just people who had access to you know, major bookstores in major cities. Yeah, exactly. So um, I want to talk about jobs a little bit. I feel like sure. that's something that maybe is sometimes left out. Uh, if we think about the next generation, if we think about uh, the kind of jobs that are and will be uh, you know, available or needed in this market, uh, could you speak a bit to that? And maybe also how the next generation should start preparing for those jobs? Sure. So I, uh, I teach in the blockchain program at George Brown. That's kind of my other hat. I, I only do one course per semester specifically so I can identify the best students and then bring them on board. Uh, we have had tremendous success with that. Wow. Yeah, we, we hired... Do you know George Petrovich? I don't. Oh, okay. Don't, uh, He's at George Brown. He teaches oh. blockchain there. Oh, okay. Actually, I think. Oh, George. Yeah, okay. George. George. Yeah, yeah. I do know George. Yes, nice. indeed. We yeah. Interviewed him. Yeah. He's on our very, list of it. Very tall guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah very nice. Um, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, and and uh, we we actually hire. We don't even concern ourselves with what you know. What your as long as your background is in STEM, okay. we know you have the the appropriate core skills, and then we hire for how fast you learn. We fire, hire for your entrepreneurial drive because it's a roller coaster, and we hire for your leadership ability because you know we're growing. And uh, so one of my students is now our VP Engineering. Um, one of our senior coders uh, we took on last year, uh, and uh, our VP Ops also. And it's it's tremendous because these are people who finish their degrees. Uh, they go to get a specific blockchain qualification. And they have that; they can take that into the market for six years, or six figures, any time. Yeah. Uh, so when they come on board with us, they are there for the vision. They're there for the long-term payoff, and those are the people we want. And that, those are the people generally. If you know, if you want to be in this space, get yourself educated and and get yourself uh, understanding what the opportunities are, because they are everywhere. And for our viewers who may not know what STEM stands for? Oh, uh, so science, uh, technology, engineering, and math. Perfect. Okay. All right. STEM. I yeah. yeah. Okay. I got it. Um, what is your sense of the investment market? I mean, a, a downturn or a winter typically would mean opportunities to get in for people maybe who aren't yet or to layer in or average down or dollar cost average as yeah. so many terms. Um, do you, you mentioned earlier that these waves, I mean, for you, it's evident that at least the larger, you know, projects and the most utilitarian, I guess, uh, are, you know, definitely going to be a good investment right now? Uh, 100%. So, you know, if, if you look to the future and the future is, is only going to see more and more of this, uh, investing in it makes sense. And it, it actually makes sense, most sense to invest in it when everyone else is like oh no and they're running away that's the famous right? Warren Buffett quote yeah right? e exactly right and be, what is it be uh, fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful, fearful. E exactly right and 
you know, if you look at it, there, there is one of the big problems in the space actually is there's a lot of stuff which doesn't really have value. There's a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon. There's the majority a majority even though yeah, isn't of great value. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, the actual, the, the things that are valuable are pretty rare and few and far between. But what you see is everyone says, oh, look, I can make easy money. They don't think it through. They don't do the fundamentals. And then they get burned. And then everyone's like, oh, well, like, I'm going to run away because uh, I, I got burned or I saw these other people get burned. But if you're looking to the fundamentals. What are the then, fundamentals? Uh, well, you have to understand. Can you give us three? three yeah. Three that physics. even someone who's not a, a finance or a tech expert or knows on chain analytics or what are simple, maybe simple fundamentals people could look at? Well, at the end of the day, uh, a project, and, and I mean, I believe our project is the project because otherwise I'd be doing a different project. <laughs> but uh, you, you have to understand, first of all, trust is actually a physics problem. Second of all, there's uh, some real computer science behind it. Okay. And uh, third of all, there's, there's the entire accessibility piece, the adoption piece, yeah. which is, you know, crypto blockchain is great. But your grandmother is never going to put in a 40-digit hexadecimal address code in order to, you know, send someone five dollars for their birthday. Yeah. You know, it has to be tap and pay that fast, that simple. It has to be have a lot of layers of bulletproofing to prevent, you know, scams and frauds from happening, or at least from being too damaging. Yeah. There, it has to be thought through, kind of like the iPhone. The iPhone didn't bring you know, a lot that was new, but it packaged it in a way that everyone could could access. Yeah. The same you could be said of Starbucks. Yeah, a hundred percent. Coffee, it's made it more ex Exactly Can right. Can you explain so. trust is physics? That that I really need to understand. Okay, so in in thirty seconds. In thirty seconds, uh, <laughs> military language. Tr uh, trust is uh, a physics problem, right? A currency is the encapsulation of energy in a verifiable token. Okay. Gold works like that, Bitcoin works like that, fiat currency works like that uh, for the whole economy. You just have to trust the government not to print too much. I don't know how, you know, That's that work, That works if you're here in Canada. It doesn't work if you're in Zimbabwe, okay. right? Um, I'm surprised to hear you say that it works when you're in Canada. Well, I mean, it, it, it works relative it to well enough, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still have a functioning economy. Um, but it really is a, phys a physics problem, and, and you have to understand that, and then you have to understand how computation is also actually a physics problem. You have to understand how those, those fit together, and then you understand what has value in the space. Sounds a little bit like a definition that a Michael Saylor could have given, no? Um, what is a cryptocurrency, by the way? What is your, your definition of a cryptocurrency in 30 seconds or less? Well, it is, uh, it is the encapsulation of energy okay. in a verifiable token in a digital form it has uh, uh, distributed trust, it is computationally resilient, and you know, that's kind of the package. Okay, right? and is it just uh, basically a new technology, sort of a, a technological um, advancement of what money was before? Uh, like yeah, so, so the, the, same, the same fundamentals apply, and, and the brilliance of Satoshi was you know, realizing that we could do this digitally distributed. Yeah. You know, we could get the trust properties that we used to have in gold in this digitally transactable form and that it would be universal. Yeah. And, and that's next level brilliant. And here we are. Fascinating. Well, a couple of lighter questions to end this interview. Sure. Uh, what's uniquely Canadian uh, in crypto or about crypto? Uh, well, the entire Ethereum network was, was formed here, the, the Cosmos Network, uh, Dandelion, obviously. Uh, Toronto, ironically, is a uh, leading Silicon Valley in terms of innovation. Yeah. Montreal is leading uh, Silicon Valley in terms of innovation. Okay. Here in Calgary. That's where we're based, by the way, so shout out to Montreal. Uh, right on. Uh, you know, here, here in Calgary, there is a tremendous amount of investment looking for places to, to put that, and, and Calgary is actually building out as an innovation hub. And the thing is that, uh, you can get that level of innovation at, and at a cost that is way below what you can get in Silicon Valley or some of these other cent right. centers. Especially you with know? the Canadian dollar being also. Yeah, well, that, that, that goes back to the, the trust property and the central government part. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a, like we wouldn't move if someone paid us.
We're really happy. We have access to a tremendous talent pool, uh, and and we continue or we intend to continue just tapping that. Any final message? Anything that you like to communicate? Anytime you have an opportunity to communicate with a Canadian and an international audience? Well, I just li I like to say like um, this is the future, and it is well worth paying attention to. The change is going to be exponential, and that means. Almost nothing will happen until everything happens. And we're about, we're, we're right at that inflection point right now in my estimation. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think we're going to see some massive changes in the way things work. I think they're going to be very turbulent, but ultimately positive. Uh, you know, and, and at the end of the line, if we can get 2 billion people who literally can't per participate in the global economy because they can't afford to get on the rails, You know, that will do a tremendous amount for global GDP, a tremendous amount for global equality, a tremendous amount for global stability. Like, this is a powerful thing. Wow, amazing. Well, we could have spoken for at least another half an hour, but uh, this was Paul Chafe with uh, Dandelion here in Calgary at the Canadian Blockchain Summit. I'm Flo, Future Flow on Twitter with uh, Crypto News Canada. Uh, make sure to give us a like, by the way, subscribe to our channel, uh, and uh, stay around for the next video. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thank you. Cheers. Pleasure.